I want to attack this trailer breakdown a little differently from three crucial perspectives, Ahsoka's, Sabine's, and Thrawn's, all released in three separate videos. Let's do this. All of us, myself included, have really been hyping up this show as Rebel Season 5 while forgetting that the story has to primarily revolve around Ahsoka's continuation. There are several gaps in Ahsoka's story that do lead us to conclude her primary motivation and the reason the show is named after her and not something else like Rebel Season 5 or something. After all that she has gone through, from fighting in the Clone War, leaving the Order, fighting for them again, Order 66, her time as Fulcrum, learning about the fate of Anakin Skywalker, she's now entering a time in her life where she can finally just sit and process everything. And instead of beginning a new story, it appears that Dave took a cue from George Lucas and brought us in somewhere in the middle of this journey. It appears that Ahsoka has been training Sabine Wren in the art of lightsaber combat and perhaps more, but there must have been a falling out that caused her to walk away from Sabine's training. More on that in my Sabine video next. I think Ahsoka somehow discovered a small Imperial remnant and learned about the mysterious Shadow Council and the imminent return of Grand Admiral Thrawn that we saw in The Mandalorian. It looks as if Balin and Shin have freed the captive Morgan Elsbeth and are bringing some attention to Thrawn's importance here. Immediately, Ahsoka goes to Hera Syndulla, who is now a high-ranking general in the New Republic military. I'm pretty sure that hunting down Thrawn based off of a lead was an easy thing for Ahsoka to sell her, but by the tone and frustration in Hera's presentation to Mon Mothma and her council, it appears that the New Republic will be of no help. This tracks because we know about Mon Mothma's reluctance to heavily militarize the Republic. We've seen it in Mando, Bloodlines, and even the sequel trilogy. Mon Mothma is wrong for this, but it doesn't make her careless or weak. Remember, she has some serious trauma stemming from the militarization of the Old Republic, the secrecy of funding the Rebellion, and going into open war with the Empire. And let's not forget about the trauma of being married to this douchebag. She's still battle scarred. Nevertheless, Hera urges Ahsoka to enlist Sabine and go after him herself. In Rebels, Ahsoka and Sabine didn't have much more than surface level interaction, so knowing that Ahsoka and Sabine trained together between the Battle of Yavin and now is pretty refreshing. We don't quite know what happened yet, but we do know how much of a firecracker Sabine can be, and we know Ahsoka has her own hesitancies in teaching as well. That, coupled with Sabine being a tough student, probably led to a disaster, and Ahsoka simply walked away. Now, if you've seen any of my Thrawn videos in the past, you know how invested I am in Thrawn's true allegiance to his home, the Chiss Ascendancy. I'll go deeper into this in my trailer breakdown from Thrawn's perspective. I also have another video detailing some stuff about the Chiss Ascendancy in the link above. But I think the culmination of this story, the end game, which will likely be played out in Dave's movie, will see that Thrawn is doing everything he's doing to protect his people from a major threat. Ahsoka's art comes down to will she choose to go, help Thrawn, help the galaxy at large, or just like her offer to rejoin the Jedi, just like the opportunity to train Grogu, just like training Sabine. Will she walk away? Let me know what you think. Very soon I'll upload part two of this trailer breakdown from Sabine's perspective. So subscribe, like, and force choke the heck out of that bill. And until next time, take care, God bless, and may the force be with you, always.